<clears throat> so, Alshandra, can we start? Yes, it's time. Let's go. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to this session uh, about the mathematical fluid mechanics. Um, it's a nice a privilege for me to be here organizing this session. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the speakers of this session who kindly accepted uh, to talk today. Um, the first speaker uh, of the, the session is Professor Marcelo. Um, Professor Marcelo uh, is from uh, Aeronautic, Aeronautical Technological Institute in the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, his talk is uh, the, has the title Space Time Averaging of Turbulent Flow Equation for Permeable Media. Unfortunately, uh, Professor Marcelo just told me yesterday that uh, last uh, uh, personal issues arose yesterday evening that forced him to travel today. Uh, therefore, he will not be able to be, to be live here with us. However, he prepared a video that, uh, despite not being the same uh, as being live, is very good and uh, we will show it as an alternative. So, Alexander, if you can, please play the video by Marcelo de Lemos. Restart, please. Here we go. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Marcelo de Lemos. I'm a professor at the Aeronautic Institute of Technology in Southeast Brazil. And I'd like to thank the organizers of the meeting uh, for this uh, honorable and wonderful invitation. So it's a pleasure to be here at the um, Encontro Nacional SPM 2021 uh, in Portugal. The starting point for um, analyzing uh, turbulent flow in flow speed is, is, is the, uh, the so-called flow average. So if you have some sort of uh, medium where you have some solid uh, phase distributed around it, so you can set up some sort of foil and, 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 and make volumetric average of some particular property. So a volumetric average is defined like this in this equation. And we have also, we can also define the ratio of volume space to total volume, which is our porosity. And also we can define, we are able to define uh, a Reynolds numbers based on the statistical uh, dimension of, um, of uh, the void space. Traditional models for flowing porous media are the Darcy model, the Brinkman model, the Falkheimer model, and the last one, which is more complete, is, is the so called the un, un, unsteady volume average of the stokes equations. And when you do not, um, a volume average, two, two uh, extra forces appear on, on the balance equation, which is the drag force due to viscosity, also known as a Darcy term and the uh, drag force due to pressure distribution around these solid particles, which is also known in the literature as uh, von Heimer term. So it's, it's important to talk about scales. Scales is very important. So if we are talking about the size, statistical size of the void uh, of being, uh, uh, of the, too small compared to the volume of integration. So we are not looking at the situation. We are looking at the situation right here on the right, where the size of the void in this medium is sufficient large for the flow to be in the turbulent regime, if you will. So we are not talking about the flow uh, uh, in grain or sand or, or things like that. So if we look at flow regimes, and if we draw here a picture of uh, the vertical axis, if we put the, uh, the uh, porosity and in the horizontal axis, we put the Reynolds number based on the porous size. You see here, for example, that if you have a phi equal to one, 
who that means there is no solid material spread in the middle. So we can come from basic laminar flow and go through the transition and, and reach the turbulent pressure very easily. As we go down in this axis, we, we start to distributing solid particles in the flow. And then uh, we may have, for example, porous medium with laminar flow, it literally, it literally treats uh, very well. But if we have a situation where the porosity is very, very large or sufficiently large, if you will, and the radius number is, is also of a greater value, then we end up with uh, some sort of uh, class of flows that uh, uh, need to, to be uh, uh, need to be uh, studied in some other case because the models actually do not quite represent the uh, situation in that particular in that particular uh, place in the uh, in the map the flow map so we look at the uh, that back in the in the 2000s we look at uh, how uh, the literature was treating those flows and we know that if there is a porous medium if it's a porous medium model, we need a volume average. If we're going to treat turbulence, we need the time average. And, and the point is, there was a, a discussion in the literature at that time about which mathematical model should be applied first. And we start digging into the literature, and we, we, we uh, were able to identify two groups. The first group said that first we should, we should apply time average and volume average. And then we get where the questions and that group was led by Professor uh, Kira Nakayama over in Shizuoka University in Japan. And the second group is in, in the United States led by Professor Laje at the Southern Methodist University. Uh, said, <clears throat> no way, you have to first do volume average and then time average and then you get the right equation. And then was, there was this uh, big mess in the literature with two groups discussing. And then uh, we came about in the early 2000s and uh, we proposed double decomposing the variables into time and space at the same time. So we proposed the, the double decomposition uh, concept. And then uh, we applied that to first was for the flow only. And then we applied for non buoyant heat transfer and then buoyant heat transfer, mass transfer, double diffusion, thermodynamic equilibrium when you have average temperatures. For the, for the food and for the solid. And then moving bed when the mass of solid is moving. Uh, and then double diffusion together with uh, the uh, uh, thermal equilibrium effect. And recently we, we ran um, transient uh, calculations. So let's see why those two groups were uh, discussing let's say about. So let's review the, the averaging operators. First, we're going to start with the local averaging operator. So the local averaging operator tell us that we can have a general property divided into an intrinsic average and a spatial deviation. And with that, we can uh, uh, go back to, to the transparent equations and, and, um, and also uh, use the uh, theorems for converting uh, divergency, uh, gradients, divergency, and time rates. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if we use uh, time averaging, uh, traditional way of uh, treating turbulence is that we split a variable that fluctuates with time in a time average and a time fluctuation. And if we apply the two average, we're going to see that they commute. As long as we, the two domain of integrations, volume and time, do not depend on each other. This is a very important limitation of all these analysis. So if we take a, a general variable and split first in space or split first in time, and you would take and use the, another, the, the other uh, operator and split in time uh, each part after splitting in space or splitting space each part after splitting time, we end up with four, four uh, components uh, when defining a general variable. So if you look at this picture here, 
let's say that uh, first we split in time. We are talking about a general variable represented by a vector AF, right? I have a vector AF. So what we do is let's say that we split in, in space first. So we go ACF, so splitting in space. And then we split each part, each of those two parts we split in time. And we end up with um, a vector which is the sum of uh, four components, A, B, C, D, F, as we see here. If we go the other way around, if first splitting in, in time, and then we split, split each one of these parts in, in space, we end up in, uh, with a general variable uh, composed by four parts that can be represented as A, B, E, D, F. So uh, we figured that, okay, uh, the uh, mean flow is not the cause of that problem. So the cause of that problem might be the statistical flow. So we, we went down and look at the way we, uh, how, how the uh, equations for the turbulent kinetic energy were derived. So the starting point is the, for uh, the equation for turbulent kinetic energy is that it's a transport equation for the fluctuation itself. And then we, we, we take a, uh, a scalar product of the fluctuation and then time average. We end up in a quantity like this. And, and we call it turbulent kinetic energy following the time and volume sequence. Right? Because first we did time average and then we did volume average. Okay, so we decided to um, derive the turbulent connecting energy equation for switching the order of operation. So we started with a transport equation for, for the um, uh, intrinsic value of the fluctuation, and then we multiplied this intrinsic value intrinsic average by uh, the, uh, the variable, the intrinsic value itself, run time average, and we end up with something which is not quite the same thing. So when deriving an equation for turbulent connecting energy, the quantities that we get for one order and the other order is not the same. So when we compared it to these two quantities, so this is the turbulent kinetic energy that was being considered by the uh, Japanese group. And this is the other guy, the other kinetic energy considered by the American uh, group. And, and then we were able to establish the connection between these two groups by, um, um, my understanding that for the first time, describing the difference between these two quantities. And that was the reason of all the, uh, let's say, uh, the disagreement between the two groups. Then later we proposed an equation, we proposed a model for turbulence and media based on uh, the standard K-epsilon model. And after one average, we include an extra term. This extra term is due to, is a generation term due to the fact that some connecting energy will be generated after the fluid goes through these uh, solid particles. And we, we multiplied by a function of C sub K that we did not know how to, uh, how to calculate. So uh, then we proposed some sort of methodology for calculating. So we assume an infinite large medium that could be uh, where we could be identify uh, a cell that could be repetitive. And then we do um, uh, computations in those cells. We did not know the value of C, C sub K, and then we would get the value of C sub K. So let's see what we did. What we did is we uh, established several geometries. Let's say um, an infinite medium made by longitudinal rods, made by uh, circular cylinders and by transversely displaced uh, elliptical rods. There's two new elliptical rods here, right? The first one. And then we did fine flow calculations here and integrated those um, 
those values of uh, kinetic energy, pressure, velocity, and so on. And what we did is uh, we plotted the turbulent kinetic energy on a non-dimensional form and the dissipation rate right here on a non-dimensional form for several uh, media topology. So for transverse elliptical rods, longitudinal rods, uh, square rods, circular rods, and all these calculations are integrated. They, they somehow they uh, laid on, on a straight line. And then we were able to identify that constant C sub K that we uh, had proposed before. Here, uh, I have um, also an uh, information regarding the uh, amount of turbulent kinetic energy that is converted from the main flow depending on the topology of the medium. So if we have a transverse elliptic rod, we, and the flow is coming from left to right, you can see that in this particular situation, there's going to be a large weight, a large recirculating bubble. And this large recirculating bubble means the turbulent connect energy is going to be high. And this is what we get here for those start points. And if we do the same calculation using uh, a stream line, a uh, light uh, elliptical rod, we see that the values around here are the triangle, the values are right here. So we, we, we lose less uh, mean kinetic energy to turbulence. And in the middle, we have the circular rods, here are those square here. And, and then uh, we see that uh, more or less regardless of the Reynolds number, the amount of energy is much more dependent that is transformed into turbulence is much more dependent on the uh, topology of the need. Well, this is more or less what I have to say. I thank you very much. I, uh, I appreciate, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the, uh, uh, the invitation for me. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very, very, very much. Muito obrigado. And uh, we have some information on our published articles, and also we have uh, uh, a few books that. Uh, uh, explain some more detail uh, all this development that we have done over the past 20 years or so. So, thank you to Professor uh, Marcelo de Lemos. I think that uh, I'm uh, with audio, yes? Yes. Uh, uh, I saw that uh, Professor Lewandowski is already here, but I think he's in the group of the participants, not in the speakers. I don't know if uh, Roger, if you have followed the link I sent you or not. Because if you went with your password, you go to the other, to the participants, not in the, uh, uh, the speakers. Uh, Alexander, I don't know if it is possible to change him. Okay, we have time. He is the last speaker um, of today. So uh, this is a, a, a video that you, that we saw with the talk of uh, Professor Marcelo de Lemos from ETA, ETA in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, if you have any question that I can answer, please go ahead. So in the, if I cannot answer, then I can put you in contact with Professor de Lemos. Uh, I don't know, we have some time for questions, one minute at least. We have these talks uh, just for Jackie and uh, Nunu uh, that will come next. Uh, the, the talks are about 20 minutes, including time for questions and answers. Oh, is there any question from other speakers, from participants? If not, uh, let us move on. I'm Please ask again to Roger Lewandowski to change to the, 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 the connection or someone in the organization to put Roger in the group of the, the speakers. I don't know if he can uh, share his talk later on. Uh, he wrote me that he, he was having some problems to access to the internet. Okay, uh, so our next speaker is uh, uh, Professor uh, 
Yaki Yang from School of Mathematics and Statistics in Northwestern Polytechnic Polytechnical University in Xi'an, China. And the, the title of his talk is the Double Periodic Viscose Flows in Infinite Space Periodic Pipes. Please, uh, Jackie, if you can share your desktop with us, go yes, ahead. Yes, uh, share my screen. Oh, thanks, Professor. So okay. uh, it's, ple it's pleasure to have, the, have, a, have an opportunity to give a talk. So uh, my name is Jia Qi Yang. So this talk is about, uh, about double periodic uh, flow, flows. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this is a joint work with Professor Hugo uh, Professor uh, da Vega. So uh, my talk will divide, divide, divide uh, three parts. First, motivation. Uh, second, uh, I will state my, uh, our main results. Uh, uh, finally, I will give a sketch of the proof. So let's start uh, the real problem. problem. Uh, this problem uh, consider uh, this domain. This do uh, the domain be, uh, uh, is a uh, distorted infinity pipes like, uh, like this, this domain. So uh, we want to study this Problem about uh, uh, about this uh, about uh, we are putting this like uh, this mathematical formulation. So this is uh, the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, uh, the, the 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 main point is about the uh, the, the boundary condition uh, as uh, 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 about uh, uh, about uh, uh, as uh, x uh, as x uh, uh, tends to infinity. So uh, the main point is uh, uh, V0 uh, F. This is about a uh, Poussey flow. Poussey flow is like this. So uh, we think we, uh, we think V0 F is like this uh, form. So then uh, we, uh, uh, we V0 F satisfies these equations. So see, uh, here, C L uh, being a constant university uh, 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 unical uh, unical de uh, determined by uh, F L. So we want to study about uh, uh, about uh, uh, study the well positions about uh, uh, this system. So about this system, uh, we have the following results. First, about the uh, digital Religion's car. She proved the uh, ex existence about a uh, solution V, but the un uniqueness uh, was not given. So uh, next, Amk uh, gives a, a give a proof about uh, uh, existence and uniqueness when flux of air is uh, sufficient small. So uh, later later on, religion religion's car and Sunika. Uh, give a different proof about uh, a, a cross section. That means uh, this this is not uh, a constant. So this is a, 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 a variant. So uh, this is about the real uh, the real problem. So another imp another impo important uh, important problem is problem is like. Uh, uh, Time per, uh, per, periodic flow in channels of uh, pipes uh, like uh, blood flow. So uh, about this uh, problem, so the mathematical uh, describe uh, uh, mathematical equation is like this. Uh, Navier Stokes is uh, this is Navier Stokes equation, and uh, uh, V zero A is a uh, uh, warm slave flow. So this is like uh, this is like a uh, uh, Poussey flow, but in this case, uh, uh, this case the velocity is depend uh, depend on t. So so we we should study this this, uh, this system. So about this problem, uh, uh, in 
uh, 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 Professor Brother Vega uh, studied about this uh, system, this term, this system, and this term. He proved the uh, about this pro uh, this uh, this is uh, 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 his he. He proved the the, uh, the well proofness about this system and this term. So, uh, another uh, important problem problem is like uh, this. So we want to study about uh, this system. About uh, 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 this system, is the point uh, the main po the main point is uh, in this case, our uh, our domain is like this. So. Uh, the domain is space. Uh, the space. Uh, the uh, the the uh, about space per 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 uh, periodic. So another. Uh, 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 and uh, the time is also uh, periodic. So so we want to like this. Uh, we want to study this system. So next, I will uh, state our main uh, result. Uh, we proved the well proofness about uh, this system. This system. So, uh, if we uh, if we assume that g is uh, is small enough, then I will give a uh, then we, I will have a uh, have a un unique unique solution about the this system. So let's uh, next. I will give some about uh, proof, just a sketch. So step one, I want to uh, uh, I I I uh, I study about this system about Stokes uh, Stokes problem. This is a linear system. So, uh, to solve this this to solve this this system, I want uh, uh, I first write this term is a uh, is a uh, equivalent uh, simple uh, system so sh actually we can prove p is like this so we put this uh, we, we put this equation into uh, this equation so we can reduce the above system to uh this to the full the full system like this so like this in this case v is periodic p is also periodic periodic so uh, next i uh, next we set a h equal to minus p laplacian uh, so here p is the the uh, projection so then we can write this system, this 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 system like this, uh, this, uh, this system. So this is uh, 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 simple. Furthermore, we set e equal to this. Uh, then we can write the above system, the, the above the above system like this. So this term is uh, very useful because. This term is like uh, it is just about v, uh, v not uh, uh, pressure p. So even more we can, uh, even more we could write uh, the above the, the above system like uh, this uh, abstract formulation. So uh, our uh, uh, so so the next uh, next we will solve this uh, this system this system to solve this term we. Look for solutions. The solution V uh, like this because uh, T is periodic, so it's reasonable to write V equal to this form, and G is like this. So to solve uh, to solve uh, this term, then we look for the solution like this. We put this term into uh, into this equation. Then we then, then we have then we then we reduce the uh, our pro problem like this system. This is uh, stationary uh, stationary systems or static st 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 system. So next we will solve this 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 this, this system. 
the uh, so we we all study about auxiliary problem like this. So actually, we can prove this system have has has one at only one solution, and uh, even more we have uh, this estimates est estimates. So if we have uh, if if we have this. Uh, this result, then we have this. Uh, uh, then we can solve this system. Uh, this system. Then we can solve this. Uh, then we can solve this system. Collect, uh, collecting the above estimates, then we can prove about uh, this this problem. So we uh, we can prove theorem uh, uh, three, like this. So we can prove the. About the problems, uh, three point seven have has a has a un uh, has a has a uh, has a unique solution, and have the following at uh, estimates. Uh, next step two, I uh, 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 I will uh, we will solve we will study about uh, long homo homogeneous uh, Stokes equation, so. Uh, this term is not zero. This is of f. To solve this this term, this system, we look for the solution into v one and v two. V one satisfies this term. This term, this term is is easy to uh, to to solve. And uh, another this uh, and this term, this this system uh, is like uh, uh, we we have solved this uh, this term. So we can solve uh, this, this so. Collecting this system and this system, we can solve this 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 system. So uh, finally, we can get this theorem. This theorem goes uh, uh, tell us we can solve a uh, system and giving a uh, uh, giving a uh, giving f, we can get we can got we can get a, a unique a unique solution v. So and uh, we have the following estimates. If we have if uh, if we have uh, uh, this system, then uh, then we uh, then we we can go to the uh, we can solve our uh, our main system that is Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, we we uh, we uh, we use about we use uh, contraction map uh, mapping per, uh, uh, mapping uh, principle. So we replace uh, we replace v uh, to uh, by a uh, w, so this is uh, this is uh, this is a system like uh, like this, like uh, uh, like this. So uh, we have theorem four, so we can solve this term. This term and giving uh, giving w and giving w uh, giving w, we can get a v. So then we we just uh, we we just check about uh, uh, this operator. T title uh, is a, a, a contraction a map. Then, if we if we if we can check this uh, this uh, this first simple, then we can go to we, then we can get our uh, main result. So this is our uh, talk and uh, my uh, and our main result. So thank you very much. So. Thank you very much. Um, so my, my my camera, I don't know if it is connected or not. Yes. Thank you very much, Yaki uh, Young. Uh, if someone has some question, please uh, turn on your audio and your camera and go ahead. Uh, is there any question? So uh, uh, yeah, I can uh, ask you. If we have time, so uh, let me see. So, can you show us your 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 first slide? The problem, the the, the that uh, I was writing some email and that perhaps I missed it. This problem. Of... No, with the equations. So you have the, the, the I think this the the, the other yes, this one. Uh, so you have the Navier-Stokes equations with the zero uh, forcing term. 
and then you have uh, this uh, this uh, this is a this is boundary condition this uh, um, normal uh, velocities at the boundary yeah. is is alpha i what is yeah, oh yeah. you have two 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 boundaries two sigma i's yes yeah 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 this uh oh this domain oh that's that that's so many so this is uh, this is uh, oh that's why i i, I didn't uh, understand well it is because uh tavern is v equal to zero yes and yeah uh, 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 yes 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 and uh, that's why this is a um a 2d problem yes and uh, you have some kind of uh, um uh, periodic boundary conditions but just in in one space direction and in uh, one uh, uh, and then in time it is that correct uh Oh, yes yes yeah so 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 you don't have the, that periodic boundary condition in the, the in the space direction of x yes uh oh yes yes so that's that's why so yeah that's okay thank you thank you very much uh, thank you thank you is there any more questions so we have time so, uh, Roger, you can switch your camera. I know you are already here and you can try to talk if everything is okay. Are you there, Roger? You have to switch on your mic. Yes, but, but uh, my connection is really low and uh, it gets, uh, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, but I cannot see you. Do you hear me or not? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Can, can you, you switch on your camera? Okay, now I'm seeing yes. you well and uh, you I'm me? hearing you well. Yes, that's okay, that's perfect. So when comes your time, you, you yes. will have to share your screen. Then we can help you, okay? So welcome aboard. Uh, so everything is okay, so, Roger? And uh, from time to time, no, my connection is very bad. Do you hear me? Can you see yes. me? Yes. Yes. Not perfectly, but I can see can you, you hear and me? hear you. Yes. Yes. Or see me. Yes. So I will try to, to find another way to connect, but uh, it's really hard because nothing works. And uh, so I, I will try to find another way to connect because I'm connecting from my iPhone. Normally it works perfectly, but just today I have. So we, now is that. We lost you for a moment, Roger. Do you hear me? Yes, yes I'm hearing yes. you. I, I try to find another way to connect. Okay. Okay, wait so five you... minutes. So you will you I'll have try time. to find another way, okay? You will start around uh, three o'clock for there in France. Okay, uh, I was forgetting, but if you have some questions, you have to to raise your hand here in the 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 the, the bottom panel. Is that correct, Alexandra? Yes, it's okay. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So we have uh, time. So if there is no more questions, Roger is trying to improve uh, his connection. So we have time. So we can introduce slowly uh, our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Nuno Lopes from uh, Polytechnical Institute of Lisbon here in Portugal. He will talk about continuous and discontinuous finite element method solutions of a first order nonlinear model for the confinement of fluid flows. Please, Nunu, when you are ready, you can start uh, with your talk. Everything is okay? I, I please, just Nunu, I please ask you that you keep your camera on and, the, and of course your audio on. The others can switch the, out, the audio. Is everything the okay? Yes, yes, it's okay, oh, okay. it's perfect. You can start. Okay, can I start? Okay, first of all, I would like to, to say that I'm very thankful for the invitation, for being present in this uh, meeting, but also, uh, more important for the invitation, Erm Gildo uh, made, made to me uh, some time ago to collaborate with him in the work uh, that uh, I will show. Um, 
In fact, uh, as, as stated in the first slide, this is a joint work with him. Uh, I will mostly speak about the, my contribution, which uh, is uh, mostly computational. And so I will only talk about some numerical aspects of, uh, of, of, of the work. Okay, so I will start with a very short problem review and motivation. Then I will get, I will give some glimpses of the, the method we use to, to plot some solutions, to, call, to compute some the, the solutions. And uh, following, I will sh show the numerical assessment, computational numerical assessment of the method. And uh, I will talk about the work in progress and the future work that we are expecting to achieve. Okay, so we are, uh, our motivation is a, a, a problem arising from plasma physics. For instance, the, the confinement of plasma that uh, appears, uh, that, uh, that is due to, to gravitational forces, but also these problems appear in lab also. And uh, uh, the model that we are trying to compute numerical is a, a a boundary very problem, problem with the fourth order PDE that arises from the stream function uh, formulation of the stationary navier Stokes equations, but with an extra nonlinear term that uh, is the, the cause for the confinement of the, of the, of the fluid. Here I have a red in, Navier, in, in the Navier word because in the, our first work, we, didn't, we, we, we only include the, the, the Stokes part, so we didn't include it yet, the, the convection terms. However, uh, in, the, in, in our in-progress work, at least from the computational point of view, these terms does, seems that, uh, don't seem to cause any, any problems. So um, what is exactly the confinement problem that we are seeking uh, for? I have a sketch here. So we have a rectangular domain. We have a, a stream induced by the boundary conditions at the left. Uh, the, 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 the stream is modeled by the equation that uh, I've stated in the, the first slide that is represented here. And uh, we are looking to find numerically computational uh, vertical strip where the stream flow is uh, zero. So there are no flow in this section. Can we do it? Can we? Uh, th this is our goal. The, the answer is not clear yet. Although from the latest computations, I think at least we have a shift to a strip. I don't know yet if the, the flow is zero, but computation, I can see already a strip appearing in this domain. So this is the type of solution that uh, we are uh, looking for. Uh, I have uh, here the, the representation of uh, of a stream induced in the, the left hand side and uh, the flows, the stream decays towards the, the right boundary. The question that remains is, is, is there any strip here or in this case here uh, where the, the flow is zero or the stream is zero, okay? So, um, the invitation Erm Gildo made me some time ago was to try to mimic some of uh, his results uh, in a computational way. So there are, uh, this is the long time uh, project for, from um, Oliver Diaz and Anton Sef, where they stated and, uh, stated and proved some properties of confinement for the semi-infinite strip. They, uh, in particular, uh, confirmed the existence and uniqueness of solution and uh, state that for uh, the value sigma uh, between one and two, there are a confinement property. Um, this sigma value is the power involved in the feedback uh, 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 nonlinear term that appears in the equation, okay? So our main goal is to tackle numerically the confinement property. We are not already there, but I think we may achieve that. Okay, so the first questions that we have in mind. So what are the available methods for this fourth order PDE that is involved in this problem? One possible answer is the continuous discontinuous Galerk infinite element method that we will apply here, but there are others. Uh, uh, by the way, um, 
in this uh, in this uh, first work we have done we have tested other methods and achieved good results also with the, the other method so um, here we can see the further the, the publication we've just uh, made uh, that, that was uh, that uh, the paper that was just published last month it will appear uh, in September where the existence and the uniqueness of solution for the weak problem is proved, the consistency, the stability, and the convergence of the method is also proved due to the hard work of M. Gildo. Okay. So um, I will, as I told you before, uh, move uh, or, or speak more about the numerical validation of the method. So what, what is uh, essential, the, this, the, the continuous discontinuous form of finite element method? It is a fin finite element method that is stated in, a, 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 as usual in, a, a, in this case, in the triangular partition of the domain. We can uh, state the, this problem in, in the discrete weak form where we are finding for uh, a solution that is uh, composed by, um, uh, com uh, that is a, a function, a C0 function, but uh, uh, element wise it is composed by P P2 Lagrange functions, so polynomials, okay? So this is the this discrete uh, weak form of the, the problem. This BD states for the diffusion term, while this delta BF states uh, uh, is for, represents the, the nonlinear feedback force while f is the, due, the the term resulting from the boundary contributions the weak formulation is state is uh, written in this way it is more or less um, a usual uh, uh, finite element method with some extra terms that are uh, imposed over the boundaries of the elements okay so this is a non-standard feature for the finite element method, for the standard finite element method or continuous uh, um, finite element method. So the main feature of this method is the weak enforcement of continuity of the first and higher order derivatives through stabilization terms on interior boundaries. So this, these are the terms here represented with gamma tilde. And from the implementation point of view, it requires an extra loop over the internal boundaries of the mesh, okay? So the pros and the cons of the, uh, the general pros and cons of uh, this type of method is, uh, for instance, the, the, the continuous discontinuous finite element method um, combines features from the, the continuous galerkin mackin method and discontinuous, but as also stabilization. So um, for the continuous method, we are dealing with continu continuous functions, but also with uh, elements that uh, guarantees the first, the continuity of the first order derivatives and above. This is not a, no, uh, not a standard feature in the continuous element uh, libraries, and it's very inefficient to implement. So it's not a, a good way to attack a, a fourth order problem. On the other way, the, sorry, the discontinuous Galarkin method is designed to treat uh, problems where the solutions are discontinuous and uh, it requires a duplication of the, the number of the degrees of freedom uh, in the method so it's also not uh, uh, a good a good uh, method for this type of problems um, as i said this method has a stabilization terms but however we have uh, in this the specific method the the penalization terms are, are not um, uh, it depends on our arbitrary penalty parameters that the user has to define, okay? And there is, uh, there is no way, uh, easy way to, 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 to calculate this, this penalty parameters, okay? So the other alternatives for, for the method, uh, for this type of method, for the ty this type of problems would be to consider a mixed uh, finite element method, which is basically a method uh, uh, based on a, a change of, uh, of variable. So it will require the additional unknowns and require solving additional systems. <coughs> However, in this work, we made uh, several tests with this method. In fact, we have 
achieve to very good results. Okay, so we also have to consider uh, an extra method to treat, to, to deal with the nonlinearity. So in this case, we have uh, uh, used a Picard type iterative procedure to solve the nonlinear discrete problem. So we have to iterate over k, k is here the, 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 the index that uh, states the iteration, and we have to stop the method when some tolerance is achieved. We here consider for the error, for instance, the L2, the, the L2 uh, error norm between two consecutive iterations. In this case, we also consider the initial approximation uh, given by the solution of the linear problem when you consider sigma equals to two. Okay, so let's move on to the method assessment. First case, it just, we constructed uh, um, a problem where uh, exact solution is given. So for this, we have to uh, consider an extra uh, external force G that we calculate and assess and make the assessment of the method against uh, 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 an exact solution. And here is the exact solution. We can show this, uh, I can show this nice plots, exact solution, the external force, and then we make the usual thing that uh, one should do in, in the, the numerical methods. We make some mesh independence tests, cons consider symmetric and unstructured triangular meshes, and the, 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 the symmetric mesh is of this form, the unstructured mesh is, is of this form, and we construct the, so, the numerical solutions and make some calculations and calculate the errors against the exact solution. We can see here that the errors go to zero. This, these are the, the, the relative errors. We have also calculated some ex, uh, estimated convergence rate. Everything went okay. I will speed up because of the time. Uh, and also tested a mixed finite element method, which uh, gave us a good, uh, a good comparable solutions and a, a good alternative method. Okay. So, and then we move to the, the, our case to try to find the, or try to seek the decayment of the solution and eventually the, the, the stop of the flow. Okay. So here we consider a case as in the first slide or in the second slide, where we induce a stream in the, in the boundary. And we, our purpose is to compare the solutions when we change the power, the power of the nonlinear term, or eventually the magnitude of this nonlinear term that is the cause for the decayment or for the, the, the confinement of the fluid. And as we expected, changing these values will uh, show uh, clearly, um, uh, I, 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 I don't want to say the word confinement yet, but it causes the clear decayment of the solution. So if we consider smaller sigma values, we have uh, um, the streamlines pushed towards the left when we uh, when compared to the bigger uh, value, uh, the larger value of sigma. Uh, if we increase the, the magnitude of this parameter, we have almost the same effect, right? We proceed also with another uh, test. We, we, we cut the, we get the, the, the central line of, the, of the, the stream and compare it and we achieve a, a monotonous decayment of the solution. This is, I will skip this slide and go to the last two ones. So what about the confinement? And this is just the new results that we are getting now. And what about the strip, the, the strip that uh, I think we are getting? So we have to look into more detail to the, what seems to be the zero zone of the fluid. But in fact, if we look with detail to this zone, for, so, so for this left part of the domain, we can see streamlines of the order of mi minus five to 10 to the minus four, okay? That appear in this part of the domain, what seems to be clearly a flow appearing in, in this case. But if we increase, decrease in this case, the, the values of the sigma, 
we clearly see a, sh a strip here where another, I don't, I don't know yet if this is a spurious or not flow, but we have streamlines here that are of the order of 10 to the minus six. So the question is, is this zero or not? Is this small enough to be zero? Is this a numerical artifact or is this uh, the, the, the flow yet, okay? Uh, future work and work in progress. So assessment of the Navier-Stokes, the stationary Navier-Stokes problem and move to eventually to the time dependent problem that uh, we already are testing, okay? So this last case is uh, one of the first tests for the time-dependent transient Navier-Stokes equation problem, uh, arising from this problem, okay? So I think I'm on my time and I end here. This should, ah, thank you, okay? So that's, oh, thank you very much, Nunu, for, for your nice talk as always. Um, <laughs> if someone has any question, Please uh, raise your hand uh, here in the bottom panel. Uh, does anybody have any question to Nunu? We have time enough, almost four, four five minutes for questions. So Nunu, it, it is me that I, I have a question. Okay. So, probably we never talk about the, the 3D problem. What do you think that can be done in 3D problem? Do you think that this machinery can work with a 3D problem it, it, or it, not? I, I'm not sure. I don't think the, 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 this method would be usable in the 3D problem. The, the mixed finite element method would be a good solution, but uh, I think it's, will, uh, it will be uh, numerically involved in at least very heavy computation. By the way, uh, uh, I, I have to mention also that the, for the transient case, I've tested the, the mixed finite element method, but, but I, I may be doing something wrong, but it seems that uh, it's much, uh, since we have an unstable solution. So probably we have to take uh, uh, the time stepping and the discretization with, mm -hmm. for this case, for that method with more care, okay? But for the 3D case, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's not possible to couple some uh, I, I, 3D with something else? I, well, this problem could be posed in 3D and we can make some tests. I don't know if you, numerically it would be, uh, feasible in real in, in, in was that uh, we just need one direction to to have the conf confinement as yes, in this problem probably the other two directions we can assume that is only one yeah it, so, it, it uh, has only one and they have this effect in only one direction but that could be interesting what happened in one direction in the other direction perhaps you can have uh, uh, fluid confinement in one direction and in the other yeah. that don't have this effect, probably don't have this uh, this uh, confinement property, but it's interesting. Is there? Not sure. I, I probably... Sorry, sorry. Right. No, no, no. Okay. Is there any more questions? People that are uh, attending uh, can also put questions. Please, if you have questions, my... go ahead. So we are in our time. Um, I think uh, uh, Nunu. Okay. Okay. We already have Roger uh, again back. Uh, I hope uh, I can do that because I have uh, now I turn to the iPad. I'm not sure I can share my screen. But it's okay. Um, but it's your internet now. It's very it's very nice. Yes, but the problem is uh, I can. Uh, the problem is a PDF of the mm. of the presentation. How to share it? Yes. Uh, no, I cannot. You. The problem is to to share the the text, and that's the problem. So I will try to find another solution. 
let me wait for I'm sorry. Uh, it's the first time such thing arrived. I think that uh, I'm using a 4G connection. Normally, it works perfectly well. It's the first time I have issues with that. Paul, you are, uh, you are again confined there in France? Yes, I'm in France. No, no, but if you are confined because of the, the, the pandemics. No, that's nothing to do with that. No. I don't understand what, what is the problem. I'm really sorry for that, but I can't say. It may, for one hour, I changed the iPhone. I, I try to, to ah, so I, I, I switch on the computer, but uh, I, I will not able to to write. I, I switch on another connection. Connection, okay? I, I connect again, okay? Once okay, again. okay, okay, okay. In one minute, Alexandra, let's wait a few moments. Yes, no problem. We can if wait. We can... And if he's having trouble with the internet. Sometimes uh, turning off the camera helps mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So Let, I will let's try. see how it, uh, how it goes. I will try. Yes, yes, that's, that's, that's in fact true. Uh, okay, he's back. <laughs> I'm back, yes. Roger, uh, prob yeah. probably if you turn back your camera, your internet uh, would, would improve. Yes, but I have to. I will try to 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 switch off also my camera. No, but the problem is I can I cannot copy the screen of my iPad to be able to write in a constant time, which I wanted to do because yes. I'm an old old fashioned uh, researcher. You know? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> and uh, I hope I can write uh, in constant time, but uh, it seems that the system does not. Uh, goes well. I try to do that one again. I try to share the screen of the iPad once again. I hope we can make it. If the connection uh, is a little better, I try to make it. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, hope it works. Okay. Because I, I need to, to be on the same co connection, you know, uh, to make it. Okay, I have something. I try to screen, to share my screen. Let us see what goes on. Yes. Okay, can you see that? Yes, that's perfect. We can see that. But you see in a, in a reasonable size or not? Yes, that's that's great. That's good. Great. So it's uh, my time to start. Yes, let me introduce you. So mm -hmm. um, our last speaker is Professor Roger Lewandowski from uh, Institut de Recherche Mathematique de Rennes from uh, University of Rennes in France. He will talk about uh, review about turbulence models involving the turbulent kinetic energy. Uh, thank you very much for your thank talk. You, Gildo, and sorry for all the issues with my connection. It's okay. Usually when we when we are online, these are problems that we have to deal with. Yes. And, Go ahead. Uh, we hope next year we can have a meeting uh, all together in the same room and uh, without yes. mask and all this. That would be great. Should be great. Yes, because uh, online. Uh, uh, sometime issues. So what I want to do is some uh, review about a problem I, I have been working on for some decades. And it's about uh, turbulent model involving the turbulent kinetic energy. So I will show you um, many different problems uh, from the simplest one to more difficult one, just to, um, to try to to say what are the main ideas. So um, in all my talk, omega is a bounded domain in Rn of class C1. And nu t, the function nu t here is, uh, so now this does not work anymore, okay. And uh, so my Apple Pencil now is down. So everything is bad today. I mean, Really sorry, I missed it. So, nu t is a continuous function uh, which is uh, strictly non-negative. And uh, the first problem I, I'm looking at is to find uh, two functions u and k from omega to uh, r, 
which are solutions of uh, problem minor, minus uh, divergence of mu t of k gradient of u equal f, f is any South term in omega, and minus uh, divergence of mu t of k gradient k is equal of mu t of k gradient u square. So uh, there are many issues in that problem because it's nonlinear because of that terms, that term, and this term, which is uh, quadratic. I mean, uh, as we, we see it, this is a term which is in L1 and not, uh, and not beta. So um, we first will focus on the case of bounded uh, AD viscosities uh, because uh, non-bounded AD viscosities uh, uh, is a more difficult problem. And uh, the first theorem I want to mention, so I, I will, in fact, in this talk, give you a list of results and some open problems. Uh, that's uh, the goal of a review, and I will not give a specific uh, proof. Uh, otherwise, in 40 minutes, it's not possible to, to show everything, okay? So the first uh, basic uh, result I mentioned about this, uh, this problem is uh, when the source term is in H1, and the main assumption in that result is nu t is, oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, nu t is a bounded function, okay? Uh, that so satisfies always uh, this assumption, bounded by below and bounded by above. And uh, so the results say that there is a solution to that problem one. Problem one is this one. I mean, in the sense of the distribution, maybe better, you can uh, compute the best uh, notion of solution uh, which is suitable to that problem. U is in H1, zero of omega, and K is in all every, uh, W1P0 of omega with a critical exponent, which is n prime, equals to n prime. So that comes from um, calculus inequality, mainly due to Bocardo Galouet. That comes from, uh, from Bocardo Galouet uh, estimates. There is a, a very famous paper published in uh, 89, where they were looking for elliptic equation uh, with a second uh, uh, right-hand side of the equation in, uh, is a measure, which is in some sense the case because here this can be interpreted like a measure, okay? And they show uh, uh, some uh, estimates for any, uh, I mean, uh, regular solutions. But uh, to prove such a result, what we do is to regularize the system. In fact, you can truncate this uh, measure term here, and you can use, for instance, a fixed point uh, argument, like uh, here you solve Kn, Kn minus one here. For instance, okay, okay, n minus one, n, okay, n minus one. So, and you have, uh, you saw a fixed point iteration, you can use uh, the ratio of the theorem, and then you pass to the limit or things like that. So, you have uh, many uh, ways to do that. But uh, the main thing is, uh, the estimates and the estimate says that u is still in the h10 uh, and k is in all w uh, uh, 1p for p less than n prime strictly and the constant blows up when uh, p goes to n prime okay so that's the first uh, result I wanted to tell you. Now about uniqueness. Uniqueness, generally speaking, for such problem is a very difficult open problem. So, and I have investigated some of them. Uh, you know, this time I was looking at this problem. And uh, what's first pro uh, result I wanted to tell you is when mu t is something close to a constant. 
Of course, if nu t would be in constant, the two equations are decoupled. Okay. And then that's uh, one classical elliptic equation for u, and then uh, another elliptic equation for k with a second hand side uh, as a measure in L1. Okay. So, uh, and in fact, uh, by using uh, uh, an argument of uh, la la like implicit function theorem, things like that, uh, you can prove that when nu t is close to constant, then uh, there is a unique solution of the problem, which is uh, close to uh, the solution of that problem here. Okay. Uh, this is done by, yes, this one, okay? I hope that everybody can see that. So, and then the assumption is nu t is from of the form nu cross L A uh, of x, L is a strictly non-negative constant, A is a C1 constant and is bounded, A is non-negative. And L uh, so is uh, clo close to zero. Then uh, the solution nu L K L that we get from the first theorem is unique and uh, converges in some sense with the solution of that system, which is decoupled, okay? So, and this is done by using the implicit function theorem. So, well, that's one of uh, the results I can show you, but really, uh, generally speaking, uh, uniqueness for such system is uh, an open problem. So uh, let me turn now to the case of unbounded eddy viscosity. So there are not a lot or so of uh, results in that direction, very few. Um, maybe two or three of them. And the one I wanted to show you is uh, the case of the, what we call the renormalized solutions. So the notion of renormalized solution was uh, initially given by Dipernay and Lyons, who are looking for the Boltzmann equations. And then they use the concept for transport equations and many types of uh, equations. And then with François Murat, uh, uh, Pierre Williams uh, also considered the fact that uh, the renormalization <coughs> can also be uh, used for elliptic equations. So there is also uh, a great work by François Murat about uh, the um, renormalization. So as a result, I want to, to tell you now about renormalized solution uh, for this system, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's a work I did a long time ago with François Murat. And uh, here it is. So uh, the question is, what is a renormalized solution? Uh, mainly speaking, uh, that's uh, in all other schools, uh, for the Italian school, um, they are talking about uh, entropy solution for the school, both from Boccardo, also Galouet, who, who was close from this school. And um, so the idea is to multiply uh, the equation by the function of uh, the unknown function, okay? And you derive a family of uh, equation. Uh, the question is to seek for the right entropies. If you multiply uh, the equation by H of U, for instance, H is what we call an entropy. Uh, in the Boltzmann equation, the H was uh, U log U, typically, okay? Which was uh, the true or uh, physical entropy. And so we, we have a family of entropy. Uh, the great question is what is the family of entropy and what is uh, uh, the sense we give to uh, what a renormalized solution can be, okay? So, and the definition is as follow. Uh, we say that UK is a renormalized solution if so there are a lot of conditions, as you say, U is in H1, zero. And for all J, uh, an integer, Tg of K is in H1, zero. And Tg, the truncation function, I mean, uh, this function, let me just uh, make a small picture. Okay, so you have here 
identity dot g equal one two three four and this is tg okay so uh, and one uh, an important feature here that this truncature are all in h10 and i remark that i needn't have mentioned it but uh, in the theorem one the solution k we get satisfy this i didn't mention it but uh, you can show that uh, this is satisfied so uh, the other condition is, uh, which is also satisfied in the case of uh, theorem one, is uh, that uh, the square root of uh, nu t of k greater than two is in L two, which is automatically satisfied, and which makes me say that this guy, in fact, is a little bit much better. That is in L one, so it's a, a little bit much better than uh, uh, a measure, okay? So we have the same regularity. And uh, in addition, we have to say that, in fact, uh, okay, we just have K is uh, in uh, the, the functature of K is in H10, but in fact, you have, don't have too bad behavior of the gradient of K and uh, infinity. I mean, for the large value of K, and uh, which is written uh, in the sense that the limit well, as Q goes to infinity of one over Q of the integral where K is between Q and 2Q, could be other things, but I mean, in, in, in uh, you know, you, you cut things in, uh, in slices, okay? And then you say that for when the, 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 the sizes go to infinity, so the gradient is not so bad. Even if you're not in H10, but you are not so far from H10, that's what, that what it means, okay? And, now, what exactly, what, what equation we solve? So here, the family of entropy is a very big one. I mean, for all, all H in uh, class uh, infinity with compact support in R, then uh, U and K are solutions. So you multiply formally by H of U and H of K, by H of K you know, in the case of the system. So you multiply by H, to, H of K. And as this is bounded, so and the, the resulting equation is this one, h of k nu t of k, because h is uh, as compact support, this guy is bounded, whatever k is doing at infinity. If it blows up, you don't mind. But the price to pay, and yes, you have to take this additional term into consideration as the price to pay, okay? But this is not, too bad too, because uh, when a K uh, has very uh, large values, H prime of K is going to be zero. And then you are saved by this condition and you are saved also by these conditions. And then this term, which looks terrible, in fact, is not so bad. You have the, exactly the similar things for this here, uh, equation for K, this, that is equation for U. So uh, this term is not uh, not terrific, for the South term. And you have still this term, that which is under control because of that, and also of that. So, and that this is uh, the equation. So in fact, U of K, a solution of uh, very many equations, as so many that you have, uh, uh, function in D, in D of omega. And this all in the sense of the distribution. So the first remark is so the theorem three. When u t is bounded, u k is a solution of one d prime if and only if, if u k is a renormalized solution. So it's uh, almost what I said when I make all these uh, remarks. You just have to check that this is also satisfied is not too difficult to multiply. You just have to multiply the equation of for k by a function like that. Tac. So here you have q to q. 
and then you um, jo just to charge this for instance and then here uh, no I will say this one okay don't want to be nice with me okay no definitely not <laughs> Here is not the good one. So the function I have to multiply the equation for k is the following. Here you have zero. You go up, up to one here, up to two q, and then so you take this h of gas multiplier, and then you deal a little bit with the, uh, the equation. You also deal with this. Uh, criterion, and then we would get uh, this limit. Okay. So, and theorem four. So it, it, it says, in fact, that the uh, renormalized solution is an extension of the standard weak solution in the case of unity is bounded. Okay. On theorem four, uh, it says that uh, problem one has a renormalized solution. So at the time we were, we were uh, finding this uh, theorem with François Murat, uh, we absolutely don't know if this renormalized solution is, oh, is uh, unique. So it says that it's an open problem. So uh, this has been done by So you can find, uh, if you want to find uh, where it, uh, it has been published in my book about oceanography, and now it's online because Masson allowed me to put uh, the book online as you go on my web page and you download uh, uh, the last version of my book about oceanography. So this is in French. Um, if some, someone wants to translate it in, in English, I'm really, be really glad. Um, for that, but uh, that's in chapter five, and we find uh, this result exactly in, the, in this reference. Okay, so you go on our web page and you will find it if you are interested. Um, unfortunately, we were never able to apply this notion when you replace the first equation for you by something which is more like an Navier-Stokes equation or an equation like a fluid equation because of the divergence uh, uh, free condition because only the identity is uh, acceptable uh, entropy. And that's not enough. We don't have any enough functions to, to apply the, the method. So this is so uh, very difficult open problem. So, and I mentioned it. So this is difficult because in case of navier stokes you have compressible navier stokes So maybe for compressible navier stokes equation, it would work, but it's another, well, that I don't know enough to, to draw some conclusions. So there is another type of solution that I like. That's a, a work uh, we have done, which has been published with Murat, Galouet. Uh, so Luc Tartar and uh, Julien Lederer. So it's uh, because we were we found things, similar things uh, at the same time, mainly with Thierry Galouet. We have a discussion, so we decide to, to put all, 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 all the guys who contribute to this in, a, in a one single paper, which is more simple. So what is an energy solution? That's a different uh, difference uh, that uh, renormalized solution. I think that uh, an energy solution is as well a renormalized solution, but I didn't have proof it for now. So I just have to first introduce some uh, notation about weighted subordinate spaces. I consider uh, B from omega to R uh, measurable functions and for guide P between uh, one and infinity, I did not ex ex 
P of B of omega. This is all the function U in W1 P of omega such that B gradient U is in LP of omega. So recently with uh, my, my friend and colleague Luigi Bacelli and other Michael Ruchica, we have investigated a little bit more such uh, things. So Michael Ruchica did a great work so, so on weighted subordinate spaces. I uh, saw so Luigi Bacelli. And so we have applied uh, more recent results uh, about this weighted subordinate spaces, but I, I will not uh, um, develop uh, this for today. But uh, uh, go on archive. This is not yet on my web page, but if you go on archive, we, you will find our last paper with Luigi, Luigi Bercelli and Michael Ruzica for another problem. But uh, we, talk, we are talking a lot about weighted subordinate spaces. So this is why I mentioned it. So this is equipped uh, with a natural norm here. And uh, we say for boundary condition, uh, because yes, I forgot to say that my boundary conditions are always homogeneous boundary condition here. Okay. So uh, I can do things with other type of boundary condition, but not today. Um, boom, boom, boom. And so X zero P of B of omega, uh, this is uh, the closure of uh, C, C of omega for this norm, it's P here, okay? So now another type of solution. So we say that UK is an energy solution if and only if, so we have always this regularity due to the bocardo galvet estimate. And the novelty here, is uh, the square root of mu t of k is in h1 of omega. And this is due to the fact that uh, under these conditions, uh, you can see that if this is satisfied, then this is exactly the u in uh, xp of b of omega, such that uh, uh, u, u omega equal to zero. So naturally it's included, but to show the quality is another question. And a uh, sufficient condition um, for this to be satisfied in this condition with uh, square root of nuity of k in H1, where B is in our case, nuity of k. Okay, then in this case, this works. I mean, a good condition in this. Okay, so we still have uh, the condition about the temperature of K and U. And this is what is interesting in that result that. Um, U is in X2 node of a square root of nu t of K of omega. I mean, U is in a space that depends on K. Okay, you follow me. That, that's so what, what is interesting in that result. Okay. And for all V, so now I have to really uh, specify the, um, the, the weak formulation I use. I cannot say, oh, okay, it works in the sense of the distribution, it's not enough. And for all V in X2 naught of uh, square root of nu t of k of omega, you have, so the classical uh, formulation. So you multiply by V, you integrate by part. And the thing is uh, here, all the terms have a sense. I mean, this integral by Cauchy-Schwarz inequality uh, has a sense, okay? Uh, good. And, uh, and also for, uh, for V, we use um, something in the sense of the distributions, okay? So the theorem is, 
B, so I always, always have mentioned this. That's what I said here. But, uh, so if, if B is in H1, then you have equality exactly. Uh, so this is another way of saying it. X2 uh, node B of omega is H1 zero intersected with X2 of B of omega, which is another way to say, as I said here, the things, okay? And uh, so the result here is, so uh, it works for a uh, dimension less than four. Assume that nu t is of class C1, but uh, not requires to be bounded. But you have some conditions, which are technical conditions here. I mean, uh, the ratio of nu prime over, over, over nu, is controlled by something which is one of a k power gamma for uh, gamma greater than one and a half. Okay, and uh, the um, derivative of uh, nu t is a bounded function. Under that conditions, then system one has an energy solution. That's the result. So, and the remark, fortunately, you can, can tell me, okay, this condition are really restrictive, it are satisfied uh, in physical case. And the answer is fortunately, yes, because uh, the, the typical physical case is uh, nu t of k is equal to nu cross L square root of k. Okay, and then you can satisfy, uh, you, you can shake that, the ratio of nu prime of, of nu t is uh, of order one of a key for large value of key, which uh, is uh, what we ask. So that this guy is satisfied. Unfortunately, nu prime is not bounded. This is why, in fact, nu t has to be replaced. And I have uh, made this such uh, things in other approach about this uh, type of problems you have to regularize a little bit so that the derivative of nu t uh, get bounded. Okay? So, that's the first part of my talk. If you have any questions, uh, please ask me now, because I turn to the problem two, where now we're looking for Navier-Stokes equation, something more close than uh, fluid dynamics. Okay, no question on it. So, and the last question is, uh, but I am also sure, almost sure that it holds is, uh, energy solutions are that equivalent to renormalized. So that's another interesting open problem. So the problem to how, how many how many times do, do I have left, Gildo? Please. More or less um, seven minutes more. Oh, I just have written eight pages. <laughs> I said it's that's, that's too much. That's, right. that's good. <laughs> yeah, more more you get old and less pages you write. <laughs> Young people, when you're young, you write 40 pages for 10 minutes. <laughs> so, so far, so good. <laughs> yes. So problem two, maybe I will not have time to say everything I want, so, but we can discuss and uh, if uh, someone are interested. So now the problem is the same one, but uh, we have, we are now in situation, so I, from now I am in R3 because uh, essentially fluids are three dimensional for me because it's turbulence, it just comes from turbulence modeling, then it's essentially something which is three dimensional. Okay, so we still have uh, this, this term which we have uh, uh, studied in the scalar case. This is why we study the scalar case because it's just to avoid all these uh, different issues with the pressure, the non term, and so on, so on, so on. So we learn a lot with this scalar uh, mathematical case. Uh, 
So, but now we have a pressure term, we have convective term, we have the compressibility constant, constraint. Here, uh, K for the turbulent kinetic energy, we have a transport term. The, the same here. And so uh, just a remark, in my scalar case, I put the same AD viscosities just for simplicity. You can deal with two different ones, you get the same type of results. But here I put uh, another one, UT is a diffusion uh, term, okay? And you have this term, which is uh, in fact epsilon, uh, because we have transport, this is a uh, transport, this is diffusion, okay? This is the production term, the equation, and this is dissipation. I mean, uh, in fact, the equation is really well balanced. And that for uh, mean, mean field, U in fact is the mean flow and K is uh, precisely where well, U prime is a fluctuation uh, around the mean, okay? Uh, this makes sense to look at the steady state case because if you look as uh, for uh, average process, what engineers or physicists uh, uh, used to do a lot, uh, you take long time average and at the end you get uh, such models. We have uh, make a couple of paper with Luigi Braschelli about the, the mathematical derivation of such problem with long time average. So you can go on our web page or it's published. So you go on that side, you will see uh, this paper. The last one is really good because we have found it again, old result obtained by Foyash initially, but we, we were doing this in another way because uh, Foyash was considering, considering statistical solutions. We were looking at natural long time average solution, which is completely different. So, and that you arrive so on such systems. Okay. So, as usual, uh, nu t and nu t are continuous functions. Okay. Uh, bounded. And L which is a uh, mixing length. Here uh, is a, a function in L infinity, which is bounded, but you can uh, use uh, other type of uh, assumption about it, which is uh, strictly non-negative, okay? Because you, you have here, and in fact, is in involved in the viscosity. I don't write it right now. And we also, what we investigated with Luigi uh, recently and Michael Ruchka is a case of where L can vanish because uh, it plays a role in the eddy viscosity. This is why we're, we're using weighted spaces to, to solve that problem, okay? So, and uh, a result which uh, improved firstly in 98, is if f is in h1, h minus one of omega, so I still have homogeneous uh, directly boundary conditions in that problem, okay? Uh, problem two admits one solution in h1, zero, l2, and still with this uh, regularity for the turbulent kinetic energy, okay? What about regularity? And this is uh, a work I've done uh, with uh, so a very old friend, which was Christine Bernardi, who is gone now for three years, three years ago. So it was uh, very sad for all of us. Uh, with Thomas Chacon. Uh, I think Frederick Escht was involved in that program and myself. So uh, that's a really, really nice result about this steady state uh, problem here. And I think I will stop with that. So uh, take 
mu, mu t equals a constant, which is not restrictive because if you were make a change of variable, uh, I mean, you can uh, reduce the problem to the case where mu t is a constant. It's written in other papers, so that's uh, uh, some uh, arithmetic. You make a right change of variable and you can go back to the case where mu t is a constant when it's bounded, okay? So bounded is another story. So there exists a real number, Q naught, strictly greater than two, depending on omega. And the ratio max over mean, I mean, uh, that's the same type of uh, assumption like a new T prime is bounded. I mean, uh, we want the ratio uh, of the maximum value of new T and the minimum is not too large, okay? That's the same type of assumption for uniqueness I, I, sh I showed you when it's close to some constant, okay? We still have always this type of assumption as soon as we want to prove regularity or uniqueness without all such problems. Uh, such that for any Q between Q and Q naught, okay? And for any data, so you have now to, to check out more regularity on the data. I mean, it's in W minus one Q of omega. Then any solution you pick A, so probably not, belongs to W minus Q. So you, you, you gain a little bit uh, on regularity also as well as for the pressure. And the good news is you also gain a lot of regularity about uh, uh, the uh, turbulent kinetic energy because you, you 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 get in fact two derivatives so it's much more better than uh, the standard uh, regularity given by Bocard de Galois equality and uh, so you have a very good estimate here which is given by that so but uh, more that guy. Uh, increases, more Q naught is small, or is close to two, understand? But you, so a last, and uh, problem three is for next year. Uh, the last theorem for today is uh, in the two dimensional case, if nu t is Lipschitz continuous with uh, Lipschitz constant equals to nu star. Uh, then if f, is small enough, let's was say that condition, then the solution to problem two is unique. So if you don't have, uh, in fact, uh, F is not too big compared to uh, the Lipschitz inverse of the Lipschitz constant uh, of, uh, of new T. So that's mean that new prime time, new, new prime, new T prime is not too big or F is not too big. So there are some uh, conditions like that, which is uh, uh, very classical in uh, standard in uh, mathematical field dynamics. Then you have uniqueness. And then the evolutionary case for the next talk. Thank you very much. Oops. So thank you very much. I think my audio is uh, on, I think. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Roger, for your nice talk. It was um, a classical talk, but uh, very good indeed, with uh, uh, very respect and uh, explaining much of details of this, uh, these problems. Uh, now we have some time for questions. If uh, there is any questions, please, you can raise your hand in the uh, panel you have at the bottom of your screen. Uh, let us wait for some questions. Is there any question? So, so let me let me ask you uh, a few questions. In your um, Roger, in your that problem that you worked with the weighted solar lamp inequality, are you there, Roger? Yes. Okay. Uh, my connection is stable for one hour, so we are. Okay, okay, okay. You are there. I'm now. I'm now seeing you. In your that problem with the weighted sub. Oh, is that one? No. 
Here. Is that, I don't know if you co, you have considered the, the um, turbulent uh, uh, viscosity uh, or, the, or in the turbulent uh, dissipation as the same function because otherwise you have uh, different weights in the equation for the, the, the momentum and the equation for the turbulent kinetic energy. Yes. Uh, um, so in fact, we, we, we took the same, but physically, uh, yes. They are a little bit different, but uh, they grew as well square root of k and infinity both, so it doesn't change. Uh, yes, yeah, so therefore you you can consider as the same. Otherwise, could be some mathematical difficulties could arise when considering different uh, weighted subalive spaces. What do you mean? When you consider this uh, weighted subalive space here, this b is the turbulent viscosity. Yes. The yes. Square and square root of the square root of the yes thing, yeah. square root, and uh, for k, uh, I don't understand well. Is is uh, k also in some weighted subalf space? No, but uh, the the great luck we have is you can show that from the equation this is uh, satisfied. Okay, that's uh, the good news. It was. Uh, by, by using really uh, slides method and you have to cut or in all uh, range where k is between uh, n and plus one integrate the equation by using the right multiplier and uh, that's a lot of work but uh, at the end uh, we get it the two, the, the two tools uh, the two secrets of this result is this estimate and uh, this result. Uh, theorem five. In fact, I learned it from um, friends uh, during Dirichlet uh, forms in probability, and they used to know this result, but they have a probabilistic uh, proof. And what we did is uh, to find another proof with a standard tool of functional analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have uh, another question. I know that in that work we, that we are doing, I have the, a lot of calculations and I see that many estimates depends on the um, uh, space dimension. Uh, I think that uh, you know that the turbulence, uh, you know, of course, turbulence is mainly a 3D. I don't know if there is 2D turbulence. There is. So, there is. For, uh, for Marie Farge, for instance, so there is 2D turbulence. You, I mean, uh, uh, when, when you look at stratified flows, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in atmosphere, there is a lot of theory for 2D turbulence, but they are not using uh, these models, in fact. That's mm -hmm. a different way of, uh, you know, eddies are considered like particles, and they are more using uh, tools of uh, statistical uh, uh, yes. physics. Yes, but my question was beyond that. Is that if, okay, uh, physically is the 3D dimension that is important, but mathematical speaker, speaking, it perhaps is interesting to, sp to talk about or to work with uh, a general dimension. Uh, yeah. All this machinery certainly will depend on the space dimension. Yes. Yes. So somehow we are, the space dimension will be bounded perhaps until Perhaps so, d equal to three uh, only, or I don't really, know if you can get the same results for d equal to four. For generally speaking, uh, the bound is n equal four. And if n equal four, mm. oh, that's great. Uh, above four, uh, nothing works anymore. So so far I know, and uh, the bound is n equal four. Mm, that's but if that's good. It's the same as for usual Navier-Stokes equation. So thank you very much. Is there any more questions? If you want to put any questions, they say here that our session ends, finishes in five minutes. So if there is uh, any more question, let me thank all the speakers of today, uh, Professor Marcelo de Lemos, uh, Professor Yaki Yang, Professor Nuno Lopes and uh, uh, Professor Roger Lewandowski, for who kindly accepted uh, accepted my invitation to deliver talks in this uh, session of the 
national meeting of the Portuguese Society of Mathematics. Thank you all. Thank we you, Gildo, for organizing that. Thanks. Sorry for all my issues. <laughs> Thank you. We are all. happy. And Thank well. you all. Yeah. Thank you all. Hope to see you in other circumstances that we can uh, face each Take other. Take hands and share a coffee together. Yes. At least the coffee that we can talk <laughs> and other <laughs> things besides mathematics. <laughs> so we have... uh, on a blackboard with shorts. And... <laughs> yes, we have. We have. We miss that the, in these conferences. We don't have that, but we do what we can do, and this is the the, the problem. So there in France, I don't know how is this uh, Delta variant with the the, the the virus, but here in Portugal is increasing a lot. So we have some it's, problems. It's too, it's too problematic here too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it's not a good hope for the near future for us. So we will have to work still in this way online only. So I'm, uh, I'm afraid for some times more, yeah. Okay, let us hope that one year is enough. So thank you all. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye. Thank you bye. very much to you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.